I got to realize that it would take too much time to have myself in the U.S. than going to a different country like the U.K. or Australia or Canada. What's the process you have to go to to finally get to start in the U.K. to work as a nurse in the U.K. How can I work as a midwife in the U.K. to come? Is what matters. You see, some people were nurses way back in their home country, African country, came back here through the wrong process and can no longer pass as a, a salary as a nurse in the UK. Well, um, being a nurse, I decided to look for opportunities to probably enhance my nursing skills outside my comfort zone, that is my home country. So, um, I think right after nursing training college, not right after nursing training college, in nursing training college, um, I think in my second year, I began looking for these opportunities. I asked myself a um, series of questions. I mean, how can I work in the UK? How can I work in the USA? I mean, what processes do I have to go through to finally get myself there? So, all these questions kept coming to my mind and I didn't ha have answers to them at that time. So, uh, in my third year, I chanced on an exam known as the English, and I was told that once I write the English, I'll have the opportunity to practice nursing in the English, and that was basically my dream country then. So, I began to give it a try uh, after I wrote my licensure, and I realized that um, it wasn't an easy exam, even though I was doing the preparation on my own, and I didn't understand the whole thing uh, into details. So, what I had to do was to probably enroll with an agency known as Avant, and I believe most of you might have. Um, heard of this before. Um, coming into contact with Avant, I was shown a lot of, I mean, other means to possibly um, work in the U.S. and then probably other countries as well. But um, the major one I was still thrown at was the English. So Avant started with me, and I got to realize that. Um, I mean, they told me to just apply online. And they gave me their website, and I began to apply online. Now, when I got to a point, I realized that they were requesting for, not basically requesting, but they asked if I had written an exam known as the IELTS, which I believe most of you might have heard. And I said no. Now, when I chose that option, I realized that I was not going to be given the opportunity. I mean, they were not going to take me serious because um, if, let's say, we have about, I mean, they have about 50 people applying for um, this particular position, and it's like out of that, only 10 people have written IELTS, I will not be considered because, I mean, IELTS may be one of the further requirements to, I mean, um, dealing with them or getting the opportunity to work in the US. So that gave me a second thought. I mean, what is IELTS? So I had to look at what these exams and things. And I also realized that it was one of the respected exams, um, an English language test, which is accepted worldwide. And it was like, looking at the kind of respect and the name these exams had, I got scared. I mean, I got to realize that it was exams for the intelligence. I mean, people who are more intelligent, and I asked myself, can I write this exam? I was not good at the English language. Basically, I could speak, but I was not confident in myself to pass this exam to be able to, I mean, pursue the dream of working in the UAG or wherever I wanted to work. So that was where uh, the idea of writing IELTS came to mind. Now, lo and behold, I chanced on uh, someone who had fair knowledge about these particular exams and that uh, he had to take me through and even expose me to people who had um, had opportunity to write the exams and pass. And that gave me confidence. I mean, though the confidence was there, but it was not as, uh, I mean, I felt I should have because I was still scared. I needed to pay an amount of money which was too huge. I needed to practice, I mean, get the practice materials and all of that. So I asked myself, I mean, um, what happens if I fail these exams? Will I be motivated to write again? Because look, the, the amount to register was too huge. Yeah. So I just had to think through this before I made a decision. Now, when I finally made a decision, my dream country was still the U.S. because I think I, I didn't know why, but I just wanted to work in the U.S. because I knew at, the, at that time that they had a preparing for robust health care system. And when I enrolled onto the IELTS and I began the practice, I got to realize that it would take too much time to have myself in the U.S. than going to a different country like the U.K., um, Australia, or Canada. So I had a, I mean, a change of mind with regards to the country I wanted to work. So what happened was now nah, I wanted to go to the UK because I had heard people going to the UK within the space of a month, two months, three months. And I was like, how can I exchange? I mean, stay in Ghana for over a year or two to get into the US, uh, US to probably, I mean, having a space of just six weeks or a month or two months to get myself to the UK. So it's like I was desperate to move out of the country to work as a nurse or to have a new environment to my job. And that is where I had it. I mean, that was when the change of um, country came to me. Working as a nurse in um, an English-speaking country is very fun because it's like, I mean, 
it's a new challenge, it's a new environment, um, new culture, and it's like you get to meet different kinds of people. And I'm working here is like uh, a multicultural environment, it's people from different countries, the Philippines, the Nepal, Nigeria, Zimbabwe. I mean, you go to the world, it's like you are meeting different people from different countries, and it's all fun, okay? It's a way to learn people's culture and they meet well with them. Aside that, um, after I had this opportunity, I just had to. I felt like sharing my experience with people. I mean, most of my friends go back at home who wish to also um, move out of their um, comfort zone to, I mean, have a new challenge to themselves. So I started sharing information about IELTS and how you can become a nurse in the UK and a whole lot of that. And people got interested. Um, because of that, I established a YouTube channel where I told them simply about this. And it's like um, the more the interest developed. So um, different questions kept on coming in. Um, what's the process you have to go to finally get to start in the UK to work as a nurse in the UK? How can I work as a midwife in the UK? A whole lot of questions came in, and it was like, um, I have to give answers to all these questions, yes, because um, if I don't give answers to them, it's like I've not fulfilled the purpose for which I was talking about working in the UK or probably moving out of your comfort zone to um, a new environment. So I feel that today I have to give extensive answers to some of the questions most people have asked. I'm not going to teach about IELTS, neither am I going to talk about. No, but I think I have to. Most people have asked questions with regards to um, the process you have to go through. Uh, others have asked about how much a nurse is earning in the UK. Others have also asked about agencies. I mean, a whole lot of that. So, in this video, I believe that I will give answers to all these questions. I won't promise you that I can answer them in whole, but I think, um, and I wouldn't know the question you have in your mind now, but in the course of the video or at the end of the video, if you felt that I've not answered your question, you can still leave that in the comment box and I'll quickly give answers to that. Okay, so today I am going to, I haven't had any planning, I'm just speaking out of my mind, okay? And uh, I would say that there's no, I don't know, I, there's no timeline to this. I don't know when I'm going to complete it, but probably let's say within the space of 15 minutes, I should be able to give short answers to some of the questions people have asked. All right, so if you are an african nurse and you have a desire to work in the uk the usc i can give extensive review about how you can maneuver your way as a, an african nurse to work in the uk yeah that's basically um, uh, what i can um, dive much into for today and if possible i'll try and look into the other areas as well um to just um, let you know basically there are some people who wish to um work in the usc canada australia apart from the uk and they also have to have a fair share of these um, as well all right so what i'm going to do here is that i will start by telling you the process you have to go through i'm just speaking out of my mind okay so um there are some of the information i believe i missed because this video is not planned it's just um going this like that okay so the first thing i would i mean it's a good idea to probably have your nursing um career started in an african country like ghana nigeria Zimbabwe, and all of that i mean have a good help i mean a good um i mean a way of probably training nurses to um, fit into their system but i believe that it's better to, to probably enhance your nursing skills to um put yourself together as a nurse you should be able to explore new cultures you should be able to move to a different environment just to see how things are done there yeah so um if you're an african nurse in the, in the country and you are desiring to work in the um, uk or an english speaking country the first step i would advise you to do is that um you write the ios basically um there are ways to go about it people will prefer to come here and um, try as much as possible to i mean there are some people who know who have relations in the uk or other countries and we're going to go and stay with them school and on the day but just look at this you see you are not getting younger each and every day you are growing as a matter of fact you should be able to um, build your dream within the space of time yeah so you shouldn't just waste a lot of years just trying to i'm um, starting over again go already you have started way back to your, your country so if you're in Ghana, you started in Ghana, you went to a nursing training college, probably completed how your license is open and uh, Miss practicing. You don't have to come over and start against like, I mean, you have taken about two or three steps back course and it's a total waste of time. So all you have to do is like, just write the highest. Most people prefer to come that way because they are desperate to come to the UK. They are desperate to work in the US. They are desperate to work in Canada. But I don't advise that. You just take your time. I mean, you want to come to, I mean, you want to go abroad. I mean, the prestige and all of that. I mean, they stay. But just take your time. Don't rush. Make sure you have put yourself together. Make sure you are coming to a country. Probably, um, I want to say, make sure once you come here, you are coming to, I mean, to fulfill whatever um goal or dream you have. Okay, so it's a total waste of time coming over here to start. I mean, again, that's why I don't recommend you just coming because you feel like I mean, once I get abroad, I mean, the opportunities are there. It doesn't work that way. It's a good thing to come to the uk as a nurse because once you get here there are lots of opportunities but the process to come 
is hard matters. You see, some people were necessary back in their home country, African country, came back here through the wrong process and can no longer practice as an ex. They have to zoom into something that is known below. I mean, that is below the adult. Okay, so once you go through the right process, you come here and be able to practice as an ex. You just build upon your nursing skill. That's a basic I mean, idea I can share with you here. So to probably come here and then start at the level you left off, make sure you write the IELTS. IELTS is the first step. One minute, as what is IELTS, I've made a lot of videos with regards to these sessions. So you can check my YouTube channel. I'm not going to dive much into it today. But I just want to let you know that the first process you have to start with is IELTS. It's an English language test you have to write. And once you have written that, um, basically you have to register with the UKNMC and they will probably um, put you on their list, go to the history process with you and finally you get yourself into the UK. Okay, so you just have to make sure you know the process you have to go through. People will advise that you can come to the UK without IELTS to test it, but there's a whole lot to it. Okay, alright, so what happens is when you get to the UK and uh, you want to work as a nurse, once you get here, you must get a pin, just like you had a pin way back in your home country. So you must get the UK pin. How do you get the UK pin? There's a process to go about that. You have to write an exam known as the OSCE. The OSCE is a practical exam. So, for example, in Ghana, um, before you are getting the pin or before you pass out to be a registered nurse, there are two things involved. You have to write the theoretical exam, which is the essential, after which you have to do your practicals on the world. So, the OSCE is like the practical versions we do on the world. Okay, so you'll be trained, and once you pass the uh, NMC, you get NMC, you issue your license or your pin to you, and you'll be called a staff nurse or a registered nurse. So basically, this is how it works. But before you come to the UK, you have to write an exam. Right after you are done with your IELTS, um, you have to write an exam known as the CBT. The CBT is your failed exams. I mean, it, it pertains to the nation. And once you pass that exam, that is basically the job. So it's tantamount to you writing the licensure. Okay, and once you have written the CBT, you come to the UK and you do your OSCE, which is the practical version. So basically, that is what you have to do. People prefer to write a CBT before even writing their IELTS. But I don't recommend that idea because the CBT is very easy to pass. The only thing you have to deal with here, or the only thing that is serving as a stumbling block is the IELTS. So once you pass your IELTS, you are free to write your CBT because there's a 100% chance that you pass the CBT. But writing the IELTS, the chance of passing is basically low if you don't prepare very well. So I've shared most of my tips on my YouTube channel. You can just check it out, just blow up, and you are good to go. So once you finally get yourself, so I was talking about um, what to expect once you get to the UK. So basically, you have to sit for your OSCE, you'll be trained as such, and once you pass, you'll be given your um, pin to practice as a nurse here. Alright, so right after that, I mean, there are a lot of opportunities if you want to enhance your career in a specialty or a whole lot of that. And even before you move out of your country to the UK, um, the hospital or whatever um, institution you are dealing with would want to know your specialty, like where you want to work. So for instance, um, depending on where you want to work, if you prefer to work in the oncology unit, if you prefer to work in the emergency unit, if you prefer to work in the medical unit, I mean, uh, um, there are some hospitals that will give you three options to choose and they will probably put you in any one of these areas to choose. So it's a very good thing to start off. Now, people have been asking about the salary and I believe that um, this is basically most of the reason why people do have to move from their own country to uh, the UK, the US or Canada, just to probably seek for dinner purchase, let me put it that way, yeah. But basically, um, and as much as you are perceiving the money and the whole lot of that, yeah, there is career development or career enhancement once you get here. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is that um, if you are in Ghana, but well, let me say once you get to the UK, what happens is that you become a pre-registered nurse. What this means is that um, you will be working as a nurse, all right, but you are not registered under the UK NMC. And what this means is that um, you are working under um, probably, or let's say once you get to the world, uh, you will be working under somebody's pin. So the person will have to be given a mentor who will actually have to see your day-to-day -day activities. So whatever you do, that person is accountable. So all this while, they will be preparing you for your OSCE. And when you pass your OSCE, you have your pin. And then you, you work independently. And that is where you're responsible for whatever happens to your patient. Okay. So that is how it is. So now, the salary as a nurse in the UK. Okay, I'm not going to give out specific amounts. I'm not going to say I think this amount at the end of the month or I think this amount at the end of the month. I'm going to give an average. So the basic thing I can let you know is that you see, once you get to the UK and you are tagged as a pre-registered nurse, there's an amount of salary you take at the end of the month. And uh, basically, once you get your pin, um, you have a different salary session altogether. So it's not a fixed salary. And as a matter of fact, it depends on how long you work in a week or the contracts your hospital have with you. 
So if you are working within a space of 40 hours in a week or 42 hours in a week or 37.5 hours in a week, it depends. So you pay that such. Okay. So the reason why I wouldn't want to mention fixed amount of money is because it varies from trust to trust. Here you are paid per um hour. So some trust will want to pay 13 pounds per hour. 10 pounds per hour, 14 pounds per hour. So it depends on where you are working. That is why I wouldn't want to give a fixed rate. So once you get to wherever you are working, the rate applies to you. Okay. So generally, at the end of the year, um, you should earn about um, 24,907 to about 30,000 pounds at the end of the year. So if you want to know basically what you get or what a nest in the UK gets, um, you can divide that by 12 and basically you can uh, get to find out for the sure. But the point is that someone may earn more than all the bar amounts, I mean the range I have mentioned here because you have to be doing extra shift, bank shift, agency shift and a whole lot of that, I mean all add up and off you go. So it's about just coming over and then trying to fit into the system and the monies will just come. It all depends on you, as, as and when you work, you get your monies. So you shouldn't focus on the money but um, you should focus on the career development because once you develop your career, the monies will automatically follow. But I just want to let you know that um, it's far better working probably here in terms of the pay than working in an African country because it's like most African countries at the end of the day, um, converting their currency into pounds, it's like it's just a peanut, okay? So basically the salary is quite good, but I mean, it's up to you to um, decide what you are using it for. It's about how you are, I mean, what you are using the money for, not how much you receive. You'll just get to know um, that um, once you are here, the opportunities are there, the money is there, but it's up to you to um, make your decision, yeah.